get yourself out there, show up on video. I know it can be scary in the beginning, it can feel cringy, but I promise once you get over that phase, it's gonna be so worth it and you'll thank yourself. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Coach Tribe podcast. Today we have with us Mill, she's an agency owner, a social media strategist, and she's ready to share with us lots of tips and tricks about how to leverage social media to grow our businesses. Mill, it is a pleasure to have you here with us today. Hello and how are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm so excited to be here and dig into some social media strategy. Uh Uh-huh. We are excited to have you here. And I would say before we get started, can you tell us why should people listen to this episode? What will they get out of it? Yeah, I think they will get so many little nuggets that they can implement right away, especially in terms of, you know, your social media, building your brand, getting out there, attracting more clients, all about providing value. And I'm not about gatekeeping. So I 100% recommend you stay all the way through because we'll be dropping a lot of gems. So you heard Mill, no excuses. We got to stay till the end and get even (laughs) that latest nugget because I bet, you know, all of them are going to add up and we're going to have an arsenal of techniques and tool at the end of the episode to really go for it and make the most of the social media and attract more people and really hopefully get more leads our way. Now, okay, cool. We have that covered. We know what we're going to talk about. And I'm thinking, Mill, before we get into the nitty gritty, Let's be clear on what is social media strategy, because I have this idea that many of us hear it so often, social media strategy, you need it. And the truth is that I feel like some of us are not really aligned with this. What is a social media strategy and why do we need it? Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like a lot of people get scared as soon as they hear the word strategy or they're like, oh my God, do I have that? Do I not? Do I need it? But really what a social media strategy is, it's your blueprint your game plan to success on social media, simply put, right? It will cover anything from who you're targeting, what your goals are, how you're going to achieve those goals, where your social media is currently at, what your competitors are doing. It's really a comprehensive game plan so that you can go into the game with a plan, right? Makes sense. No, what I really like the the way you said it, it's it's a game plan and we all need a game plan in the end especially if we want to win the game now i would say let's imagine i'm a coach and i'm just getting started on social media what are the main things that i need to be aware of or like how do i even get started with the social media strategy and i know there's an option to maybe get some help someone like you to help me out but what if this is not a choice for me now Can I do my own social media strategy? How do I go about that? Yeah, so I think first of all, you really need to know who your audience is, right? Who are you trying to go after? Who do you want to work with? What type of client are you looking to attract? Because without knowing this, you have no idea what your next steps would be, right? Like what platform do you want to be on? Because your audience is there. So I think that is a major piece. In the beginning, a lot of people don't know who they're talking to. And if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one, right? So I think it's very important to define for yourself. Okay, so this idea of niche down, it always comes up. And I <laughs> I, I believe in, in, in it as well. It's like so important to know that because once you know that, You can understand what sort of content you need to produce, where you need to be, and who is the one consuming your content. And that's going to be very useful because it's going to tie in into, again, the way your content will be consumed. The Code Tribe podcast is powered by Pensite. I want to take this opportunity to tell you more about Pensite and how much value it can provide you and your coaching business. Pensite is an all-in-one platform for coaches and educators that enables you to quickly and easily build a highly credible page and sell your knowledge with one-to-one sessions, group coaching, courses, Q&A, digital products, and bundles. Payments, scheduling, video calling, client communications, and everything else is taken care of. All it takes is five minutes to set up and it's free. It's the smartest way to kickstart your coaching business. Sign up to Pinsight today at P-E-N-S-I-G-H-T dot com.
Okay, so first step is we know who we're talking to. What else? How do we decide on the type of content that we want to create? It's it's overwhelming and there's so much we could do. How do we learn to prioritize? Yeah, so it is a bit overwhelming in the beginning. So as you know who you're talking to, you want to research your audience a bit, right? Where are they hanging out? Maybe you have a big competitor or a big account in your industry that has the same target audience as you. So you can do a little bit of social listening, as we call that. You can go into the comment section, see what people's pain points are, see what they're struggling with, so you can address these type of things in your content. So that is one way you can kind of build out your content. And as you build out your content strategy, this is all stuff you want to experiment and test. So if you're on a platform like Instagram, I recommend doing a lot of different types of content format to kind of see what works for your audience. What do they like to consume? And also they consume different types of content for different reasons, right? So for example, I personally do not like always watching video. It doesn't mean I don't watch video, but so variety is really important. Variety is important in terms of format, type of of content we're producing. And just to be clear on Instagram, that means we have the reels and then we have the static post, the simple one picture post or the carousels. And obviously, if we get into even more detail, it's going to be the stories and lives maybe, but that's already going into more details. Now, I want to be clear with something, Will. So we said that social media strategy can be a bit overwhelming and also that people have mixed definitions of what it should be. But I want us today to be as clear as possible of what a strategy is made of. So we said, let's say step one would be niche down. That's one step in your strategy. What else would a social media strategy, what is it made of? Like, what are those things we need to are, that are part of the strategy. Right. So a couple of other elements are a social media audit that's inside your strategy where you're auditing your own profile. You need to know where you're currently at so that you com- can compare yourself now versus three months in the future, right? So you can see, oh, did I grow? What what happened? And you can compare numbers. Now, another thing is competitor analysis. You want to compare yourself to competitors. What are they doing? How often are they posting? What kind of content are they posting? what works for them, what doesn't work for them. So that is actually a huge deal. And because a lot of the research from competitors, you can also take into creating your content, right? Something that works for them may work for us as well. Then you get a little bit more into the nitty gritty with you know, a content strategy, your content pillars. What are you focused on? What message are you trying to get across? If you're on Instagram, of course, hashtags, keywords, and things like that are important. And that kind of wraps up really the foundation of your strategy. I feel like one mistake that many of us are doing when we're getting into the social media game is having this expectation to reinvent the wheel or to create everything from scratch or to have to define everything ourselves when I feel like one of the biggest assets that we have is actually looking at similar content that we want to create and replicating what already works. So I just wanted to highlight that that bit of, you know, look at your competitors, see what's working, see what's not, and maybe just take some inspiration from there. And that's okay. Okay, cool. Let me ask you this before we go into techniques and secrets on how to grow and get more reach. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people doing in their social media strategy or on their when it comes to their online presence? What are those mistakes that you see them doing again and again? And they are costly. Yeah, so the biggest mistake is not having a strategy, right? So like we I get approached by a lot of people or they want a quick fix, they have questions. And I'm like, I cannot answer this. I have no idea what your strategy is. I don't know who your audience is. I can't look at an account and just look at it from the surface. It won't tell me the whole story. So 200% is not having a strategy. Most people just kind of wing it. And like, if it goes well, it goes well. But when it doesn't, then, you know, there's no way to pivot. And if it does go well, then you're not quite sure how you got there in the first place because there was no 
strategy behind it, right? So it's 100% the biggest mistake. And if it comes to, you know, having a strategy, I think like, or misunderstanding what it is, not being clear on your audience. I see a lot of the time that people aren't really sure who they're targeting or they're trying to target five different avatars still, right? Which is really pushing it. Like it's very normal to have multiple target audiences, but five is really pushing it. So usually I would say no more than three audiences that you have that have different messaging and stuff like that. So that's another mistake I see often. Yeah, I think those two are definitely the biggest one. Okay, we know who we're talking to and now we're ready maybe to define that social media strategy and understand what sort of content we're putting out there. But how do we break that down into topics or how do we know what to post, when to post? How are we strategic with that? Like, how do we actually create this, the social media strategy? Yeah, so you kind of refine it first, right? The kind of topics that align with who you are, what you do and, and your message that you're trying to bring across. It really depends on what's going on and what are your goals in the business. So let's say... I am launching my membership again this month and it opens in May, right? So I am heavier on the promotional content. Doesn't mean that I'm constantly just selling. I'm still providing value, but it does mean I'm going to mention my offer maybe every single day on stories. I'm going to go live, which in any other month, I wouldn't talk about it as much because people cannot sign up anyway. So it all goes back to your goals. What are your goals? And then... Each post that you put out should have a goal as well. It's not just every month we measure reach, impressions. No, every single post you should have a KPI too to measure and say, okay, this is how I would know that this post is successful. Can you give us an overview of these goals and like KPIs from when you just get started to let's say one year in or like more advanced users? Can you give us an overview of what are these initial goals and how do they uh, develop? Yeah, so initial goals, 100%, you're focused on brand awareness. Now, some goals and metrics that align with brand awareness are reach, impressions, right? Story mentions, people that tag you in their content if it's a brand versus, you know, an individual. Those are the type of metrics that you're really focused on. How can you get in front of people? Especially if you don't have an audience yet, you're trying to grow and establish yourself you would be focused on those KPIs to really get your name out there. How do you measure that? Like, let's say those are the goals or KPIs. How do you know what's the metrics that you have to achieve? Yeah, so when you're starting out, you first want to gather your own data. So you can come up with like, let's say you post for three months, right? Then you can get an average of your reach impressions over those three months. And that would kind of give you a benchmark because then you can say, okay, this month we hit above average or below average. So that way you can kind of tell whether it was a good month or not, right? You need to have some type of averages. Now, another way to set benchmarks is to compare yourself against the competitor. Maybe you feel like your reach is low, but your reach is still higher than other people in your industry. So that's another way to compare. But you do have to be careful with that because you don't want to compare yourself with someone that is way ahead, right? You don't want to compare your chapter five to someone else's chapter 50. So you do want to be careful with that. I always recommend comparing your own data against your own data because it gives you the most realistic view. Yeah, that's a very important one. And looking like knowing how to creating the habit to check your insights and then knowing how to look at the insights and how to compare different sets of data. Okay, before we go again into those techniques that I promised that we're gonna get into, what is the importance of having a clear brand message or branding in your content? communication, social media page, like how important is to have those brand assets in your social media strategy and as part of it? Yeah, no, it's actually very important because it does have to do with who you're trying to target, right? Establishing a brand, having your assets, your brand guideline, it's all should align with who you're trying to attract. And that's how you create brand recognition, familiarity, right? To where you are attracting the type of person you want to attract. You don't want to be a high-end luxury brand with a Canva logo, right? Just to give an example. So 
Yeah, in that sense, it's very important. For us in, in the agency, we actually do not take on any brands that don't have their branding. We would either create it for them before we start or they would have to get it done, but we would not. It's like a requirement. And for an individual, a personal brand, can you give us some examples of things they should integrate into their branding? What are some things they should have in line, whether it's the colors of the brand, the feeling, the voice, the tone? Can you give us some examples of what should people be aware of? Yeah, so 100% your color palette, right? Color palette, your fonts, so that you are consistent throughout. And yeah, brand voice is a huge part of your branding. Like, how do you want to come across? Especially if you outsource to someone, a social media manager, they need to know what kind of voice you have, right? Are you, is your voice inspiring? Is it, I don't know, energizing? Whatever words might define your brand voice is actually really important so that al aligns with your messaging because otherwise what you will see too is that your messaging is not on point right you're you're conveying a different message every post and that's obviously the last thing we do yeah and this was a reminder for me of something that i think again is important you mentioned the word consistency and i just wanted to say that in the beginning it's totally fine to play around with different things different formats to see what works even the reels what captions but i would say be specific with the length of your testing period and then try to build in this consistency because it does make a difference and i know and maybe here mill you can help me out i know good predictability is also a thing so creating content that is predictable so that people know what to expect from your page can you tell us more about that yeah for sure especially like you said consistency right like consistently showing up but also in terms of, you know, your content, you don't want to use a completely different style every time because then people will be like, oh, who's this, right? So you want to create that familiarity so that people, without looking at your handle, they know, oh, that is Simply Media or, you know, that is Maria. So that they create that familiarity. And it is so important because the more familiar people are with you, the more they will like you. It's it's psychology. We like things we're familiar with. That's a big one. I'm happy you put it out there. Can you give us, let's say, a blueprint for how to select these topics we're going to talk about or how to be a bit organized and not all over the place? Is there a way we can create a an easy structure of what we're going to post in the first month? Like how many times? Is there something we can follow? It's hard to give one answer. It really depends where someone is in their journey. But like a good rule of thumb, like in terms of your pillars, what I like to do is come up with three categories. So what are you going to be focused on? Like promotional, educational, shareable content, personal content. If you're a personal brand, that's something that we always include. And then from there on, kind of build out your topics. Because that way you can put them in each bucket. Okay, if I want need to be promotional today, then, you know, I'm going to talk about my offer, for example. But it doesn't have to be limited. Like, for example, for me, I talk about Instagram, right? Social media strategy. And like, these are broad topics. There's so many things that fall under this bucket. And yet you can be consistent because people know what to expect um, from your page. What tools do you recommend, especially the beginners, to use um, to help them with their social media? Whether it is CapCut for Reels or, or Canva, are there any tools that you know you usually recommend? For people to use yeah i mean canva is a no-brainer right canva is great especially for beginners to get yourself out there get creative create stories whatever you want to do i love CapCut. it's been really helpful i think it's again especially if you're a beginner it allows you to be more creative and eye-catchy and trending the captions app is a great one uh, for those that are putting themselves on camera to make sure you have captions and even the tools inside of, you know, an Instagram, like looking at your Instagram insights, it gives you a lot of data, especially in the beginning phases. And if you're not trying to invest in a bunch of tools, I highly recommend that. Another very user-friendly video editing is InShot. So I think those are like the main apps that we would use that are just very, very user-friendly and allows you to be creative. It's a good thing to know about this because they can make your job so much easier some of these have templates and it just can really speed up the process and it just makes it more efficient as well. So it's good to know what are the tools that you can 
leverage in your content creation. Now, let's get a bit more into details. How many posts should someone post every week, ideally, in the best scenario, if they have the capacity? Yeah, so honestly, bottom line every day, daily, yeah. Daily. And this is post. Do we talk even about those six stories a day that I've kept hearing recently about or? Well, I mean, I think, yeah, stories are always good to show up. I, I don't like to put an exact number on it, but, you know, it's good to show your face and it's, it's a lot more laid back, authentic. You don't have to plan it all the time. But in feed, I definitely recommend every day because in feed you grow, right? You get in front of new followers and your stories is really for your current followers. So that's the biggest difference. And with stories, I'm curious to see your take on this. How important it is to be strategic with stories? Because we also know those cases when people really post random things just to post stuff. Um, can that actually hurt? And yeah, how can we be strategic with stories? Obviously, as a social media strategist, I'm always about being strategic, whether it's stories or in feed. So and it, for our clients specifically, of course, they can post whatever they want because we take care of the strategy side when we post on stories. But ways to be strategic is using engagement stickers, poll stickers, asking strategic questions to lead people into your offer, for example. Are you struggling with one of the following? If they vote, you can reach out to them. You can message them using link stickers, right? To let lead to your offer, kind of having a storyline behind your stories so that it's like leads them in and then maybe, you know, promotes and announces the offer. But the engagement sticker is a great way because if you get them to engage, you can then reach out to them after. Now, Mill, the more you talk, the more as a listener, I might feel overwhelmed by all of this information. Is there anything to help me with that? Like, how can I deal with so many features and ways of using social media? Because it is a lot, even for us that we're always on it, there's always something changing. How can I not be overwhelmed by social media when I get into it in early, early stage? Like, what is there anything I can do? What's your advice on that? Yeah, of course, you can outsource it because, I mean, at the end of the day, yes, you are overwhelmed because this is not your zone of genius. This is not your professional job, right? Like it would be for us being on social media all the time. So outsourcing is one, getting a, an assistant to even help you a little bit with it. And otherwise, if you don't have those resources necessarily is, I would just say, you know, just show up, like don't overthink it and, and show up consistently and kind of figure it out as you go. Those would be my best pieces of advice. Well, thank you. That made some of us feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I um, hope so. Okay, now time to have even more fun because I'll be asking you about some of those techniques and things related to hashtags, time of posting, lots of the spicy questions that I know everyone sort of has their own version of them now let me ask you this since I, we said okay ideally you should post one post every day and this is on instagram because that's what we're mostly talking about is there any special time we should post our stuff is there like a best time to post yeah, so I personally don't believe in the best time to post, and I'm sure it's not the answer people want to hear. What we've seen works well is posting in the mornings because then your post has all day to kind of marinate, get seen and things like that. But prioritize creating great content over finding that perfect spot, that time to post, right? And in terms of length of your content, let's say, especially with reels, is there a specific length that works better? For example, I know there was the there were those seven second reels that performed really well, uh, that went into a loop. Or maybe should we keep it up to thirty seconds? Is there any best practice there? So I think it really depends on your audience and how they like to consume content. Again, it really varies from audience to audience. And that's where, again, social media strategy comes in, right? You get to know your audience and what they, how they like to consume your content. And then secondly, it depends on your type of content, right? Yes, short reels can do really well because it loops and, and the views add up, 
But of course, if you have a highly educational video, there's no way you can do that in seven seconds. So it really depends on those two things. What does your audience want and what type of content are you creating? Can you tell us again, what do you mean by being strategic? Is it, is it having a clear idea of what your post, next posts look like and how they tie in together to each other? Is this what you mean? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is knowing the purpose behind your post. Like, why are you posting this and how are you going to track its success? So let's say I put up a promotional post. I'm not expecting it to get a bunch of likes. Like, who likes a post that just talks about your offer? Usually, you know, it's not the highest engagement you will get. But if I receive 10 website clicks then that post was really successful because I wanted people to check out my offer or DM me or whatever. I think this is, again, like so good to be aware of. So depending on the goal of your posts, the post will perform differently. And it's important to know these nuances so that, you know, you know what to track and, you know, what to change and improve, which takes me to the next question how important it is to re-engineer your content or like re-publish your best performing content. How important is this bit of maybe once you create content, not just forgetting about it and making use of it in the future? Yeah, so that's actually a great one. And I'm a huge advocate for repurposing, like having a repurposing strategy. I always say like, you know, not 100% of your audience is going to see your post. And also as you keep growing your audience, new people come in. So it is the fastest way to boost your traffic is taking your best performing posts and simply posting them again. You don't have to change a thing about them to repost them and it can still bring in traffic and do really well. And is there a minimum time to wait before you post? Like how do you usually do it? Like how long do you wait before you republish a best performing video? Yeah, so for me, I have a very high posting frequency, so I can do it more often, right? Like if you post multiple times a day, the, the post will be very quickly. But like, let's say you post three times a week, it's gonna take longer for you to then say, okay, now I can repost. But usually I would look at maybe at least have around 18, like two, like nine, nine post grids around probably around 18 posts, every 18 posts or so. But to be honest, there's no specific number to test it at because people simply just, they won't even notice. And even if they notice, if it's valuable content, they're okay with consuming it again. And sometimes the second time you come around a piece of content, it gives you like a different perspective or conclusion, right? It's like rereading a book or re rewatching a movie. We do that all the time. And yet people are scared to repost a post that they already published. Yeah, this is so important. I'm happy we're mentioning it because I know many have this fear of, oh, but I've already said this or I've, I've already, even when they create new content, you know, it, everything again has to be exclusive and only mentioned once, but it's not like this. You can repeat yourself. You can talk about the same thing. You can post the same thing because the chances are, you know, People don't really pay as much attention as you are to your own content. So you have much more to win from this than to lose. So that's, you know, one good practice. Take your best performing content and then republish that. Also, I would say, if it's okay for me to add that, to learn from that. And you can also even go one step extra and re-engineer your post. So, for example, if you're on TikTok, I know there's this trick. You know, you can see how your video performed each second and where the attention drops. So, if you have a video that you really believe in, I know one thing we're trying is maybe, you know, the hook wasn't strong enough or you're losing them in the next four seconds after the hook you might want to refilm that bit and then put it all together and just send it out and maybe it will perform super well so it's also not just putting things out and just forgetting it's like playing with it thinking something that is good and making it even better and i think for me i really wanted to put this out because it has been a big lesson of not just constantly create 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 put out make something
coming out with what we're already creating because there's a lot of value in that and I feel like a lot of us we're always focused on creating something new and different than we forget about so much value that we generated in the past yeah and it's really like working smarter and not harder and I also wanted to add on that point where you say like you can repeat your message it's actually like you have to repeat your message you need to repeat and drill your message into your audience it's like kind of in my message I'm always talking about social media strategy and that you need one you need to take that message and be able to say it in let's say a hundred different ways that's when you really reach your audience that was nice say it in a hundred different ways and <laughs> find the words of your yeah and find the words <laughs> of your audience and say it in their words like right, right. that's a big one as well know what they're looking for how they're looking for and literally use their language for that okay now back to you and your tip tricks and tips can you tell us about hashtags what's your winning strategy there do you even use hashtags yeah hashtags actually what i've noticed for smaller accounts they have an even bigger effect than now that i'm a bigger account i've noticed I am currently testing not using hashtags because I know there's so much debate around it and I just want to get some insights to see what difference it actually makes because I know the head of Instagram often talks about that they are not as important and only using like five. What I have noticed though is that Instagram is becoming way more searchable, very similar to what TikTok already has been. So I wonder if it has to do with that, that they are not as relevant, but I've still seen great results on using hashtags as long as they're relevant to your content what people search for yeah those are the key things to take into account how many do you usually use usually i would use a, a, between 15 and 30 i do not stick to five just five like some people say what i have seen is that more has worked better when i do use them on tiktok i only use around four or five though i will say i'm not you know your pro tiktoker i know a lot of people like freak out on hashtags is that they're not going to make or break your content. So don't overthink it. Use them, experiment with them, test it, and then leave it as is. What will make and break your content then? The content itself. <laughs> literally what you put into your content what you get out there because like we said before posting time right and now we're talking about a hashtag it's not going to save a bad piece of content that's all i'm saying sure it could boost a little bit and i always say okay yeah don't post when people are asleep um but it's not going to save your a bad piece of content that's why i emphasize always create great content and it will get seen should be a slogan <laughs> by the way when you said you post in the morning can i ask you when in the morning is it what 7 a.m 9 a.m earlier yeah it's around 6 30 7 a.m mainly also because i post multiple times a day so you know i can start early gotcha 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 another useful hack here would be you guys can see when your audience is more most active if you look at insights especially if you have a business account or creator account you can see the time when you your audience is most active every day each hour of the day so that might be of use to to you as well but again it really depends okay cool so we talked about hashtags posting time what else is the big one that people have a feeling that it's it's what's going to make or break their content i think one thing that can actually really boost you especially when you're starting out want to grow your audience get in front of more people is collaborating especially on a platform like instagram that's a huge deal you can get in front of other people's audiences by going live with them, using the collaboration tag on posts, story takeovers. There are a lot of ways to get more exposure that way and being strategic with that rather than, you know, overanalyzing posting times. How can I initiate such collabs on Instagram with people or other creators? What is one good way to do it? Like, how do you propose I reach out to someone and how can we collaborate? What should the proposal look like yeah so i would suggest always following people first right kind of getting to know their vibe see if it would be a good collab and then reaching out to them saying hey you know would you be open to collaborate on you know x y and z and you can depending on your strategy you can reach out to different people so like let's say if you're a local business and you have local clients you will probably want to collaborate with someone local right it doesn't have to be in the same industry but you are in the same location now if you're a remote um, and you're a creator you can collaborate with people in different industries 
that have a similar target audience, or you can collaborate with people that, for example, for me as a marketer or social media marketer, I can collaborate with other social media marketers because we have similar audiences. So one way to do it, to be more specific, could be for Mill, who's a social media strategist, to potentially collaborate with one of her competitors, maybe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, and you guys could do, what, a carousel where both of you share tips, or maybe it's going to be you sharing tips, but it will be a collab, so the post will be shown on your competitor's pages well competitors is a lot to say in the same industry with a similar target audience is this something close so is it about sharing value and then you guys can do a carousel is this one way to do it yeah so that's one way to do it and i like that you pointed it out that you can also just create the content and post it on their feed so like you can either work together actually collaborate on the post or you can say hey you create three posts on my feed and i create three on yours That's another way. And, you know, personally, I don't really believe in competitors. You know, I'm all about community, but kind of play around with what you're comfortable with on who to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. And I love you mentioned community because I feel like that's the word of 2023, community. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how can coaches, creators leverage that on social media and how important it is, you know, to create the community, engage with the community. Yeah, I think it's so important because it builds trust, but also authority, right? That's how you really position yourself as a thought leader in your industry and creating a space where everyone's welcome. And it says something about yourself and your confidence, I think. Like, you know, I have my own community off the platform, uh, my membership with social media managers, and they all offer services that I do. Everyone has their own unique selling point, right? Someone that wants to work with me may not want to work with some of the other people and vice versa. So you attract a different type of person. That's why I believe that, you know, it's so important to create community. And then on top of that, if you're a coach creator, create a referral network that way. Maybe there are services you don't do and you can refer someone to someone else and vice versa. When you say build the community and you mentioned maybe take it outside Instagram, how do you do that? Is it, you know, one of those membership programs? Where do you host such a community? Yeah, so you can host it obviously on a variety of platforms. I, I, I know Pennside has everything in one. So with Pennside, you could easily set something up like that where you grow and build your community, sell courses. So there are a variety of different ways. It just depends on, you know, your preference. And what's the benefit of moving them outside Instagram and making a more compact community? What's the benefit in that? Yeah, of course, you know, functionality first. There's no way you can host something like that on Instagram. And on top of that, like diversifying, you know, your audience and not being reliant on Instagram alone even though they have ver the verification subscriptions and things like that, that does make it maybe a little bit more safe with your account. It still is at risk that, you know, what if the platform were to die or go away that, you know, you want to have your audience off the platform as well. Got it. And in terms of this, uh, what you provide in this community, um, how is it for you? Do you just maybe share tips, value, group coaching sessions, or do you provide materials, courses? What's part of your community and what incentivizes people to be there? Yeah, for my community specifically, I do monthly live trainings, kind of live coaching with the group. So yeah, this group coaching, we have hot seats. You know, if you need feedback on any puzzles they've created or work they've done, I can give them feedback on Feedback Fridays and really the sense of community. Like we have all become friends, which is really pretty cool. I always notice members are all like interacting with each other's content on Instagram. People, most people have met through the membership and they now seem like best friends. I don't know. It's just really cool on how that works because, you know, it does get lonely being a entrepreneur or solopreneur. Yeah, it's just such a great way to have accountability, training, expertise, all in one. Yeah, and ask this follow-up questions because, again, community is the word of 2023. And this building a membership is getting bigger and bigger. And it's a great way to yeah. again, leverage your audience and then to large group clients, basket size, if you wish. 
not in any, in a very strategic way. It's like a way for other people to tap into different resources that you can offer and for people to get your help. So it's just putting in place different types of products to satisfy different needs of your clients. Okay, cool. I love that we touched upon that as well. But now time is running low. So I wanted to ask you, Mill, any last tips and tricks on about Instagram or about your social media presence? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, like get yourself out there, show up on video. I know it can be scary in the beginning. It can feel cringy, but I promise once you get over that phase, it's going to be so worth it. And you will thank yourself for having shown up and build a community and attracts your ideal clients couldn't have said it better myself and if i am to add one thing that i always like to to mention is also try to think of the long-term game rather than you know just i have to go and, and blow up and become <laughs> have my uh, videos going viral now it's not really like that it's a long-term game and I feel like once you come in with this mindset it will take away from that you know like expectation and fear and because suddenly you know like it's it's a process and you, it's always about that improvement and yeah I feel like I just wanted to mention the long-term game and that it's a process and that it's all about deterioration in the end. And don't let social media rush you. <laughs> yeah, one step after the other. And don't get into the trap of, oh, but everyone else is so successful so fast. And they grow so yeah. fast. And they have 50k people, followers in one month. Totally possible. But those are really exceptions. And the truth is that most of the people with big audiences... They really have experience. They've worked years. They've had made hundreds, thousands of videos before. So it's not really what it just appears to be. So I want you to focus on your journey and take it step by step because I think that's the best that you can. And learn from the best, obviously. And be strategic. <laughs> can I say Mil any any last last other thoughts to what I said or anything like that um no I think you wrapped it up perfect that sounds about right <laughs> awesome I was saying from the beginning I feel like we make a very good team and compliment <laughs> each other now tell us where can people find you why should they reach out to you and how can you help yeah so the easiest way is probably through instagram at simply media advertising and that media and advertising share the a in my handle i'm now meta verified so it should be easy to recognize if you have any strategy questions need help with strategy or social media management and i'm happy um, to help send me a message definitely check mail out and even if you're not maybe ready to work with her just yet know that she has lots of tips and tricks so if you've enjoyed this episode and i'm sure you did since you're here with us uh, till the end make sure to follow her because she really has some spicy posts and very useful and informative so yeah with that being said, what can I say then? A big thank you for today, Mill. It's been really useful, really informative, and just a very nice conversation to, to have. So thank you so much for, for today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. I'll see you next time. I'm glad to, to hear that. And yeah, now I'm going to say thank you all for sticking till the end. And I'll see you all for the next episode of the Coach Tribe podcast. Have a good day, everyone. And I'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be releasing every Wednesday. So make sure to subscribe. And rate us five stars where you're listening to this show to give others a chance to discover it too.